Last week I posted a video about my new Sony A9 and by far the number one comment that I got in that video was not about the camera, it was about me leaving my sensor exposed not using a body cap. And it's not that I don't have a bunch of body caps because I do. And I do use them when I store these cameras at home. But I guess I'm not that sensitive or sensorative about getting dust on my camera sensors because I've learned over the years of owning so many cameras that they're pretty easy to clean and I've really never had anything permanent left on any camera sensor that I've used over the last six years or so. But those dozens of comments did get me thinking just how durable and how scratch resistant is a Sony mirrorless sensor. In order to find out, I'm gonna take this box knife and scratch up the sensor on my A9. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't do that. But let's perform a couple of experiments. This is your typical APS-C sensor mirrorless camera. Now, if you were to take this sensor out of the camera, you would get something that looks just like this. This is a sensor from a Sony A6000. So I figured instead of destroying a perfectly good camera, I'm just gonna buy this as a spare part and perform my experiment on it. What I'd like to do is to test out how scratch resistant this mirrorless sensor is, and I'm gonna use a couple of things to do that. So the first thing is I wanna tape off four sections because I'm planning on doing four different things to it. So I got this 1 8 inch yellow tape. I'm gonna put one piece of tape across the sensor just like that, and I'll place another piece vertically. Run the uh, cleaning swabs through just to clean up my fingerprints. These swabs uh, work very, very well at cleaning. So the first thing that we're going to test is dust. So I have a little bit of dust here from our vacuum. I'm just gonna put it in this corner and uh, I'm gonna use a Q-tip. And we're just gonna pat it down and rub it in. I don't think that uh, dust is gonna do anything to this sensor. Um, not to say that like small rocks wouldn't do something, but um, this just kind of loose dust, what you typically get, it should be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna use a little blower just to blow off some of it here. Okay, and then we'll use a swab and then dry. All right, so I see absolutely no scratches here in this first quadrant. So uh, we are able to clean off the dust without any problems, no scratches. Next up, let's see what happens if you put some dirt on your sensor. I grabbed some of this from our front yard and we're just gonna put some dirt right there in that quadrant. Pad this dirt down. So if you were to drop your sensor on the ground, kind of typical of what you'd see from that. So I'm rubbing it all around. And let's use the little cleaning kit again, wet first. And dry. get into the corners there. So uh, let's take a look at this one. So again, nothing. Um, I'm not seeing any marks, uh, nothing permanent left on that sensor from rubbing dust on it. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that in the camera. So next, let's see if we put some oils from, let's say your fingers. I uh, use my finger and just tap it down. Uh, I w definitely wouldn't recommend doing this to your sensor because it's uh, not the easiest to clean oils off of it. And if you have some contaminants on your finger, you could possibly scratch it. We'll clean it up with the dry swab. Nothing there. I don't see any permanent residue or marks. So that's oils. Uh, so far, this sensor has held up quite well to dust, dirt, fingertip oils. Um, now let's get the uh, the last bit out of the way, um, and that is what happens when you put a knife to it. So I have uh, just a typical little box knife. 
Uh, the blade's pretty new, so it's nice and sharp. And I guess what we'll do is we're just gonna take this corner and I'm gonna drag the knife across just lightly. And then I'm gonna go a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. Let's just go and start. I mean, you can see how hard I'm going on the tape. Let's go this way. We'll see if this leaves a crisscross pattern. Okay. So I think that's pretty good for uh, knife work. Now let's uh, wipe it up and see. All right, so you guys see that there. You could see the marks in the tape. And you can definitely see that the sensor has been affected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this yellow tape off so you can see the whole thing. There's a little bonus tape residue for you. Let me clean this whole thing up again and we will assess the damage. All right, so here is the sensor you'll see in this top corner where we had dust. Uh, there's no issues, no problems. This corner where we had the dirt, also no issues, uh, nothing that is visible. The corner that I touched up with my finger, um, nothing. Even the excess adhesive was able to be cleaned off pretty easily. However, in this bottom corner where I did use the knife, um, there are some very faint marks. And actually there's one kind of a deeper mark here. You can see that my knife kind of scratched up the edge of the sensor. But this deeper scratch right here would definitely affect your photos. And what's surprising to me is not every single knife mark um, is visible. I mean, there's some faint ones. That is the result. I mean, ultimately, if you are um, using a mirrorless camera out in the wild and you have a speck of dirt or dust or you touch it on accident, you shouldn't have any issues as long as you're not taking a blade and trying to scratch up uh, your sensor like that. That's not to say if you get a speck of, let's say, a small rock on your sensor like that, um, you don't necessarily want to just grab your finger and start wiping or even use one of these swabs because by dragging it across the sensor, you could potentially scratch it. So in cases where you do have, you know, a little rock on it, I would recommend um, flipping your camera upside down, using a blower, and then uh, blowing any large particles and then following up with a swab wet and then dry when necessary. But overall, I'm impressed. I was expecting the dirt to do something and I was expecting the fingertips to leave some sort of mark. Um, obviously, I knew that the knife would probably leave something, um, but surprised that it did well with the other things that we threw at it. So that is the durability of a Sony mirrorless sensor for you. So there we go. I think we have a positive result. I am pleasantly surprised by how durable these sensors and the glass on this sensor is and hopefully that put your mind at ease a little bit i think the key to not having sensor anxiety is just knowing how to clean your sensor if something does happen to fall on it like a speck of dust or some dirt and in that case i'll reiterate kind of what i've repeated in past videos uh, you want to start out with first and foremost see if the camera can clean the sensor by itself there is a cleaning mode on every single Sony camera that I've tried out. Second step is to use a, a blower. So it's kind of the second stage, tilt your camera upside down or in a downward position like this, and then just blow at the sensor. Level three is you can use one of these cleaning brushes. I don't recommend these because I feel like they leave some residue and uh, that can be more detrimental than beneficial. And uh, level four would be the kit that I have recommended uh, numerous times on this channel. So you just put the solution on the swab, do it one time wet, and then follow it up with a dry swab. And this gets rid of every single mark, everything that I've ever had on a Sony mirrorless camera. So definitely worth the money there. Hopefully this video put at least some of you at ease when it comes to using your camera without a body cap. That is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.